Where did you get this? It's fantastic. You can just give them any words you want and they you send know, it to you. The capitalism has already created a market for quarantine birthday signs. Hello and welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It's my birthday in quarantine. Woo! Woo isn't that nice? My daughter ordered this. My kids just put it up in my set. I caught them doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Today I turned more at risk. This birthday is not as festive as usual, though this is pretty nice. We're all going to have to get used to celebrating. I'm on a... What is going... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Keep singing. Quarantine birthday to you. Anyway, isn't it cute? I love, let me see what it says. It says happy, happy I quarantine birthday. Cheers with a little with an espresso martini. Espresso martini right Jen there. Jen from Little Daisy, Little Daisy and Montclair made. Gorgeous. <sighs> oh, yeah. That is fantastic. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Where were we? This birthday, I gotta say, is pretty festive. Uh, maybe more festive than usual. The line says not as festive as usual, but this is actually really festive. Anyway, we're all gonna have to get used to celebrating major holidays in a quarantine because this pandemic appears to be making itself comfortable. As a result, Broadway shutdown has formally been extended until Labor Day. Turns out this is not the right time for company. Time slam! Yesterday, the Los Angeles officials announced that LA County's stay at home order will last for at least three more months. Three months? No, no. We had a system, okay? Every two weeks, somebody tells us it's just gonna be another two weeks. Even the airlines have the decency to pretend the delay is only 15 minutes. We know we're sleeping on the floor of the Hudson News tonight, but we appreciate the effort that went into the lie. California's Governor Gavin Newsom wants the whole state to take it slow, announcing he was modifying the state's stay-at-home orders to allow individual counties to approve the reopening of malls for curbside pickup service only. Who wants curbside pickup at the mall? Does he not know why people go to malls? for the recycled air, to sit in the Brookstone massage chair, to check a mall walker into a fountain, to huff a Yankee candle. If you're spending money at the mall, you're doing it wrong. The bad news for college students, sorry, John. Bad news for college students because yesterday the Cal State system announced they're going to keep campuses closed for the fall semester. But to ensure students still get the full college experience, Cal State will be mailing all of them a six pack of Natty Light and a free case of herpes. Nobody likes that we have to do this, but we have to do this. According to health professionals like infectious disease expert and detective who just figured out that the stepson did it, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci testified yesterday to the U.S. Senate and he warned what would happen if the country reopened too soon. The consequences could be uh, uh, really uh, serious. I'm sorry, is, is this not serious yet? Is this the hilarious part? And I can't tell that everyone's laughing because their mouths are covered with masks? Okay. Republicans are desperate to reopen the economy because if they don't, they'll have to do the unthinkable. Give money to someone other than rich people. And they're sick of Dr. Fauci reminding them of how many people will get sick. Take Kentucky Senator and hobo who traded places with a millionaire in a 1980s comedy starring Dan Aykroyd. Rand Paul. At yesterday's hearing, the libertarian senator was openly skeptical of Fauci's advice. I think, I think we, we ought to have, have a, a little, little bit of humility in, in our uh, belief, belief that we know, know what's best for the economy. economy. And, and as, as much, much as I respect you, Dr. Dr. Fauci, I don't, I don't think, think you're, you're the end all. all. You're right, he's not. And all is actually Trump's new campaign slogan. With all the mixed messages out there, the public is getting confused about how safe it is to reopen. That's led to more people going out. According to the New York Times, about 25 million more people ventured outside their homes on an average day last week than during the preceding six weeks. 
and they know that because of a New York Times analysis of cell phone data. Wait, the New York Times has access to my cell phone? Well, that explains why the headline in this Sunday's style section was, you look weird when you sleep. I do. Now, with all these people venturing out, the most widely cited coronavirus model now predicts 147,000 U.S. deaths by August. That is horrible. But at least we know what the song of the summer is going to be. Pharrell still got it. Keep in mind that one month ago, the same study predicted 60,000 deaths by early August. So they're now predicting more than twice as many fatalities, or as Trump calls it. We have met the moment and we have prevailed. We won and to celebrate, I'm giving every American a big marble trophy with their name on it and the year they were born. It's not like he doesn't know how dangerous reopening the country too quickly is. A leaked White House Coronavirus Task Force report shows infections spiking more than 1,000% in some rural areas. For comment on that alarming statistic, we go now to Old McDonald. E -I -E -I -O. If those numbers sound bad, uh, it's because they are. According to Johns Hopkins, the United States has the most confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the world. It's not even close. Look at this chart of confirmed coronavirus cases. All of these countries down here are countries that maintain social distancing. This pink line is us. We flatten the curve straight up. One science advisor predicted where we're headed. To infinity and beyond. Don't jump. I know it's bad, but don't jump. Despite having about 4% of the world's population, the United States has over 25% of the cases and fatalities. Yet Trump can't stop patting himself on the back. I think one of the things we're most proud of is, uh, this just came out, deaths per 100,000 people, death. So deaths per 100,000 people, Germany and the United States are at the lowest rung of that ladder, meaning low is a positive, not a negative. Uh, Germany and the United States are the two best in deaths per 100,000 people, uh, which, frankly, to me, that's perhaps the most important number there is. Oh, here's another important number, 100 percent, which is how much of that he just yanked out of his keister. In fact, according to Johns Hopkins, in per capita death rate, the United States ranks ninth highest out of more than 140 countries. The United States has a worse record than such medical powerhouses as Moldova, thanks to the fine work of their Minister for Public Health, a potato. I am Brombarova Polevka. I am quite delicious. In this vital statistic, the United States is even worse than Iran forcing Iran to change their protest signs to death to America. Oh, wait, never mind. They got it covered. Our government's response has been so bad that Americans likely won't be allowed to visit Europe anytime soon. Forget Europe. At this point, I'd settle for a trip to the International House of Pancakes. Rudy Tootie reporting for duty. The lockdown was also affecting the 2020 election. Hey, remember that? It's just a few months away. And Trump is itching to get back on the campaign trail. Tomorrow, he's going to Allentown, Pennsylvania, where he'll visit a medical equipment distribution center. He so wants to be doing stadium rallies, but instead, they're making him do educational field trips. Wait a second, is there any way you could make these forklifts scream my name? Could they at least hold up a baby in a racist onesie? Trump's campaign plans are in stark contrast to those of his likely Democratic opponent, former vice president and current instructor at Seniors Karate Night, Joe Biden. Like most of us, Biden has been hunkered and bunkered at his home. He's been holding online campaign events, and that's not going to change anytime soon. According to his team, Biden plans to continue campaigning virtually from home. It makes sense. You know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke, but rising in the polls, lock it in the basement. Biden's decision to stay socially isolated is getting some criticism from people of both parties who say he's been hiding in his basement. 
Look, I'm not hiding, Jack. No way. Basement is where I got my model trains, and I took a solemn oath to serve the good people of Gumdrop Junction. Doot, doot. Come on, I got the lights working on the water tower. That's not easy. Can't get these switchers to... Can't get the switchers to work. To fight back. Biden went on the TV to tell America he's campaigning harder than ever. We're on a campaign trail now. You know, everybody says, you know, Biden's hiding. No, don't help your enemies with a fun rhyme. It'll only backfire, just like the Democrats' disastrous 1948 slogan, Truman ain't human. But as soon as it's safe, Biden is ready to hit the trail again. I mean, I'm anxious to go out and campaign, George. You know, when I campaign, I'm usually the first one there and the last one to leave. I enjoy in interfacing with people. Yes, we know. And you promised you were going to stop that. Home campaigning seems to be working for the former Veep. Biden's lead is the steadiest on record, with his polls six points ahead of Trump. Seems like the less voters see Joe, the more they like him explains his campaign's new rallying cry, lock him up, lock him up. Oh, we have got a great show for you tonight. Again, it's my quarantine birthday. I will be talking with America's British sweetheart, Hugh Laurie, but when we return, kids ask me the darndest things.